Hi, Miss B here to give you a lesson on pop art. This is something I teach every spring to students and we usually do a screen printing or printmaking, some kind of printing project. Or and I've also done it as an acrylic painting project um, or watercolor project in the past as well, but typically we do printmaking in, since we can't do printmaking. Um, I still wanted to teach you about pop art since it is one of my favorite art movements in art history and one of the ones I feel most connected with. So what is pop art? The pop in pop art stands for popular. It began in England in the 1950s and came to America in the 1960s. It began because of a consumer boom after World War II. Americans had money again, and artists were making art about familiar objects. It also caused, uh, it was also, uh, it also came about, pop art also came about because um, it is a rebellion against the previous art style, which was abstract expressionism. Abstract expressionism is, comes from artists like Jackson Pollock, who's another one of my favorite artists, who did the splatter paint paintings, and that's where those come from. Also, William de Kooning and Lee Krasner. Lee Krasner was Jackson Pollock's wife. And the artists who um, were creating pop art, they did not like abstract expressionism, and so they did something else. That's how art movements come about. They come about because they didn't like whatever was previously happening, and then they come up with an idea to do something new, um, and that's how art movements happen. So uh, pop art is a celebration of consumer art. You know, like all the stuff we like to buy, Art critics hated pop art originally, like they do all new art movements. But pop art was eventually seen as respectable as a respectable form of art, and it is just as significant as all art styles that came before it. Originally, pop art referred to images of mass media, like comic strips, soup cans, famous people. Now, it's seen as anything that is popular to the artist who made it. An art movement that happened at the same time as um, that happened at the same time as the pop music. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> pop art w was an art movement that happened at the same time as pop music. The that started in the fifties and sixties. All right, these are some of my favorite pop artists: um, Roy Lichtenstein, Andy Warhol. Peter Max, Keith Haring, and Wayne Tebow. Wayne Tebow does not consider himself a pop artist, but his work fits in very nicely with what they show. So I'm only going to be talking about Roy Lichtenstein today. He is my number one. He is the reason that um, one of the reasons I became an art teacher uh, was from after learning about this artist, and my passion for art really grew after learning about him. So here's a picture of Roy Lichtenstein. Okay, just so you can, this was from a long time ago, whenever he was first um, kind of getting into being uh, famous for his paintings. He is one of the few that did become famous while he was still alive. He didn't have to wait to die to get his work to be known. He was um, well known before he died, which is really awesome. All right, so like I've said already, um, I've pronounced his name a few times, but I haven't broken it down for you. So pronounced Lick Ten Stein. And my high school art teacher had my class do a research project on any artist of our choosing. There was only one problem. I didn't know any artist at the time. So he suggested Roy Lichtenstein. And um, the internet was just coming about whenever I was in high school. I think I was a sophomore in high school when I did this project. And which was about 1996, I think. And um, I did go to the high school library. I got on the computer, went to the internet to try to find out who the heck this Lichtenstein character was. And I wasn't sure at the time if it was Lichtenstein, Lichtenstein, I, I wasn't sure. So eventually I learned. All right, and then I was immediately drawn to his work and became a forever fan of pop art and Lichtenstein himself. He was born in 1923 and died in 1997, and I think that um, I don't remember him being dead whenever I did this research project or 
maybe I did this research project in 1997. Um, and then I was kind of sad because I was like, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't know him before he died. So anyway, he died from complications of contracting pneumonia. He is considered the father of pop art in America. He is known for his large-scale renditions of comic strip art. He would zoom in on uh, the characters or the frame. So thinking about a comic strip, he would zoom in on a single frame of the comic strip and turn that into his artwork. He would focus um, on primary colors, you know, red, blue, and yellow. And then he would also do thick outlines around all of his drawings or around all of his subjects, just like in a comic strip. And then he would use what was called... Uh, what we know as bende dots or half tones. Um, this is what's used in to create a newspaper image. And I think I have a slide more about that later. All right, so here's um, one of the first artworks I ever saw of Lichtenstein's work called Kiss 5. That V is for Roman numeral 5. This was made in 1964. Um, I love this artwork because or I love Lichtenstein's artwork in general, all of his work, his whole body of work, because I feel like they're very relatable. Um, I can make up in my own mind what the female figure is crying about and why they're holding so tightly. Okay, so I want you to write down some notes of what you think is going on here, because you will share those th thoughts later. That will be your assignment later. Um, so we're looking at them, and we can see that they're holding really tight. Their faces are touching. She is crying and everybody's eyes are closed. There's this moment that we're looking at, and there's so many things that we can think of that come to mind of what is happening here, and that's what makes it relatable, and that's what makes us drawn to it. Okay, so really study. I want you to take a minute to really study and think about why are they, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Is something good happening or something bad happening? Something sad is happening? Something happy, you know, what is happening here? So you, as the viewer, get to decide, and that's what I love about Lichtenstein's work so much. All right, a little bit more information about this. If we zoom in on the image, um, you're going to look really, really closely at those dots. That's those bende dots I was telling you about, those half tones. This was a nod or an acknowledgement to how newspaper images were created. So newspaper printers were limited to common colors, kind of like your primaries, and they didn't have skin-colored ink. So newspapers had to find a way to use the colors available in a creative way to convey the color they wanted you to see. So newspapers used uh, dots called bende dots or halftones. For example, they would use red dots on a white background to create the illusion of pink skin because our brain blends the white background with the red dots to make us think we're seeing pink. And Lichtenstein used dot stencils and a team of helpers to create this artwork. So let me go back really quick so you can see, right now you can see the red dots um, and the white background when we look here. We still see it, but not really. Our brain blends it all together, so really we're, we think we're seeing skin tone, but really we're not. We're seeing a white background with little tiny red dots on it, which is really cool. Alright, this is another one of Lichtenstein's. Uh, this is similar to the one uh, with his portrait where he was standing in front of. This one is called Blam. Um, by studying the image, we can relate to what is happening. The airplane, airplane is probably in war and being struck down. Um, and the silhouetted figure we see over on the right, this, here's a figure right here, uh, we can assume is the pilot being ejected. And we can relate to this stressful situation um, in a time of war. I am teaching at my, you know, teaching at Heights, living near Colleen, living near Fort Hood. We are all very close you know, close to the military. Many families, even though nobody in my family is in the military, but I have so many students who do. Um, and this one always is a popular one with students because they can relate to it, even though we don't have the Air Force here in Fort Hood. Um, but it's still war, and everybody can still relate to that. Maybe it reminds you of an old video game. You know, we can all, we can all relate to this. All right, Lichtenstein, this is one of my favorite ones to talk about. This one's called In the Car from 1963, and it sold for over $16 million in 2005. That was a new record for Christie's Auction House in New York. 
And this artwork um, has always been one of my favorites to discuss because I like to ask the question, who is driving and why do you believe that? What is happening? What is about to happen or what has happened here with these two figures? Okay, make some notes because you are going to share your thoughts with me later. And I'm so sad we can't have this discussion in person as a big group uh, because it we could spend an hour talking about this photo, this artwork um, alone. And so for that reason, that makes me so, so sad not to be in class with my students um, because I love discussing this artwork. So I'm not going to give any of my thoughts or opinions because I like to hear what my students have to say. And so um, I hope you take the time to think about what is happening here in this photo. She's looking straight on. He's kind of glaring at her. She is stone cold. You can see the cars moving because of the lines happening by her face and outside the male figure's window. Um, but who is driving here? Who's driving? So are they in England? Are they in America? Is she driving and they're in England? Or is he driving and it just looks like like he, his hand is just really giant and coming towards her side of the car for some reason? Um, so who's driving here? And what has happened? What is she mad about? Is she going to be mad about something that's about to happen that he's going to do? He's already done something that's made her mad. So I want to know what you think the story is here. All right, and this is the last slide that I'm talking about. Um, this is a photograph I took of Lichtenstein's artwork that can be seen at the Fort Worth Museum of Modern Art. And the little bubble, the little thought bubble says, I'm supposed to report to a Mr. Bellamy. I wonder what he's like. This was in reference to Lichtenstein starting a new job and his new boss was Mr. Bellamy. Lichtenstein was a graphic designer, not a pilot. Um, it's funny to me that he portrayed himself as a pilot and maybe this was a dream job of his. And so this is another one I like to talk to students about, like, why did he make himself a pilot? Um, you know, what, what were the thoughts? Maybe he wanted to be a pilot. Who knows? Maybe he thought the guy was handsome. We don't know. All right, but we get to decide as the viewer. So um, in Schoology, you will go on and answer the two questions, um, one about Kiss 5, and then give me your thoughts on the in-the-car artwork. And can't wait to hear what you have to say.